that's pretty much it. Don't know what we're gonna do with this yet. I don't know, I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see on the title. Maybe in the meantime, we can take apart the whole front end and get after that uh, fan issue. We'll see, because if I can't get the title, we're taking it apart anyway, so it wouldn't be a waste of time. So that's about it, guys. Um, I don't know, I don't know what else to tell you. We got a new WJ. Yeah, let me know what kind of WJ content you want to see. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. It is time for an update video on my 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland that I call the Green Hornet. All right, guys, here we go. This is my 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. I call the Green Hornet. I got this last year. It's almost been about a year, and uh, this thing was sitting in my neighbor's driveway. So I'm going to take a walk down the block. I'm going to go see about a WJ. <laughs> it had no plates on it, and the tires were flat, and it was looking pretty crusty, and I thought, man... This thing needs some love. I figured I'd go over there, speak to my neighbor, make him an offer. He couldn't refuse. We'll make him an offer he can't refuse. I was just going to say that. And he refused. So <laughs> he came back with a, a price um, a little bit higher than I wanted. I shot back a little lower, and we agreed upon $300 for this bad boy. This is... A, an Overland Edition Grand Cherokee. It's got the 4.7 high output V8 and it's a nice looking Jeep. Now it had a whole bunch of problems I've been sorting out over this last winter and uh, well there's still more problems <laughs> and I can't really figure them out because I haven't been able to drive this thing yet. As you can see no registration. See when I bought this thing the previous owner could not find the title he searched far and wide, couldn't find it. So I had a title servicing company do all the work to get this thing titled and registered in my name to make it all legal. Now that was, geez, about six months ago and I've been calling for updates and they had no answers for me. It is, uh, It has been filed and I guess the paperwork is lost in the mail, maybe poof, like Kaiser Soze. Then she pulled a damn Kaiser Soze on me and like that, she was gone. He's gone. But good news, I just got an update and the plates are in the mail. It should be on the road very soon. So uh, let's take a closer look at this thing. Let's, uh, let's dig in. Let's start with these wheels. We're gonna start with these wheels because, well, I needed wheels for this thing to roll it back and forth on my driveway or from my front to backyard because uh, the wheels that came on this thing, they were those chrome clad overland wheels and they were just, uh, they were flat and well, disgusting. So I found these on Facebook Marketplace. These are Wrangler wheels. They are Moab wheels from a 2012 JK and uh, they bolt right on. And this was perfect because I got all five for about a hundred bucks and uh, I went ahead and did a wheel swap. Unfortunately, all these stupid acorn lug nuts, they were rounded, and uh, those chrome wheels were seized onto this so bad, I actually had to cut the wheel off of this vehicle. It was, uh, it was a disgusting, horrible mess, but I got the job done. We got away with only breaking one lug stud. So uh, that was a challenge in itself. That was the very first thing I did to this vehicle was got tires that held air. So that was the first thing. <laughs> That's not sounding good. <laughs> Those are the shocks on the WJ. So I wanted to get shocks and I figured might as well just get a little budget boost. The next thing I did was I went ahead and I had to get a Rough Country 
two inch budget boost because well these wheels were too big for this vehicle <laughs> so i popped in a rough country budget boost it's about two to three inches and that really looks good on this vehicle i think that's a really nice ride height for a wj looking good on these well the next step obviously is i gotta get new tires because these are bolder than bald i don't think i could put too many miles on these on the road they're just uh, completely worn all around. But the size is pretty good. We got uh, 255, 75, 17s. Um, they do rub a little bit when the wheel is at full lock in the front. Maybe I'll get the same size. I was thinking maybe I could go a little bit wider and just pop on a two inch wheel spacer. That will fill out the wheel wells really nice. So um, I'm gonna get tires for this thing soon. And of course it needs an alignment. After you lift it, it should be realigned. That's gonna get done very soon. So, wheels, tires, lift. That was basically the first thing I did to this thing before it even left the driveway. Now, I normally wouldn't recommend doing a lift first. You wanna make sure it's mechanically sound first. So, I like to do an oil change right off the bat. So that's one of the first things I did. But for this thing, being under the hood was much more involved. I mean, look at this air filter. Come on, this poor thing. Check out this, man. Underneath the oil cap, it is just caked on with sludge. This is after me wiping it down, too. <laughs> oh, so many other things that this thing needs. So let's take a look at what I did under the hood of this thing. Alrighty, here we go. So, Clearly, I did the hood struts. That was a that was a must have. You can't have this hood open with baseball bats and wiffle ball bats. That's just annoying after a while. <laughs> Got a little broom in there. Here we go under the hood. Let's see where do I start. The first thing I needed was a radiator. This radiator was just blown out there was a giant hole in here it did not hold coolant so a radiator was a must it also had a hydraulic fan solenoid check engine light so i got a new hydro fan now it took me three fans to get it right the first one i got was broken the second one i got was uh the wrong year it had a different solenoid but that turned out that you can do a swap. You can swap the different solenoids from 2004 to the earlier models. Just so happens that the one I got was also broken. <laughs> so on the third try, I got a properly working hydraulic fan solenoid. While I was sorting out the hydro fan issue, I also put on a new power steering pump because the power steering fluid is shared with the hydro fan. That's why they call it a hydro fan. The fan is powered by hydraulic fluid from the power steering. So I did that whole system. I got all new hoses, all new lines, and I have all new fluid. You have to get the right fluid that is specific for hydro fans. Otherwise, if you put in the red stuff, it won't work. Check out my video on that. It is very important. What do you mean it's the wrong fluid? Yeah, the hydro fan in the WJ needs Mopar power steering fluid, part number MS10. 838. What I think they gave you was the newer version of Mopar power steering fluid. I gotta change it out. I, I hate to tell you, but I think you gotta pull all that power steering fluid out and swap it with the right stuff. All of it? Yeah, bud. All of it. Jeep my life. Jeep my life, bud. So I got the power steering pump in, I got the hydro fan in, I got the radiator. Next I had to put in new coolant. And of course, when I went to bleed the system, look at this sucker. The bleeder is completely stripped. So what I did was I got myself a bleeder fix. Go check out Martin Built's video. I also did a video too, but I want to give the credit to Martin Built. This is my new bleeder. It brings the spout up right up here gets a lot more air out and I love this so thank you Martin for the idea this is running great right now and of course I did a catch can gotta have an oil catch can I've been putting these in all my vehicles it is great I did it when I did the PCV valve where is it somewhere in here <laughs> so check out my video on the catch can 
and uh, I got this new battery got a battery from my cousin when he upgraded his now I did a battery test on this so stay tuned for a battery video what do you say we test out this new top down battery tester on this battery that I got from my cousin now he put in a new battery on his WJ and uh, he gave me this one I figured that his battery has got to be better than <laughs> has got to be better than my battery that was in this so let's see this is supposed to be really easy we just connect it to top down battery tester all right let's see uh, battery test enter it's a regular flooded lead acid battery all right cold cranking amps let's enter cold cranking amps and yes 850 850 CCA cold cranking amps enter and now testing let's see what it says Wow here we go bad <laughs> gee whiz healthy 7% it's only got 231 cold cranking amps it's at a 45% charge and I don't know what this means but it's bad so Matt you are right to get a new battery I guess I gotta get one too now, the only other thing I did was I did a new thermostat. Of course, I got a new air filter. What else? I think I got this new belt, uh, a new used belt. This is probably from the junkyard, but it had a lot less wear than the one I originally had. So I got a new belt on. Of course, I got myself a new oil filter and I changed the oil. But I got an even better oil change video coming up soon. Chris Watson from Watson Synthetics hooked me up with some AMS oil. So when I get a couple miles on this bad boy, I'm going to do a hot flush and put some nice AMS oil in this engine. I can't wait for that. Thank you so much, Chris. And of course, I'm going to do a transmission fluid flush eventually, uh, probably with AMS oil. But I'll do that once I get a few miles on it as well. All right. Well, that takes care of the under the hood stuff. I guess I'll start it in a minute, but while I'm at it, I did get new headlights because these are really ugly, yellowed, and fading. I tried a little technique to uh, wipe away some of the film, and I'll do a video on that soon when I do a headlight swap video. I got new Laredo-style headlights. I like them better because they have the black inside. I also got new fog lights, and a company reached out to me to do a LED swap, so we'll do headlights and fog lights in an upcoming video. I can't wait for that. And uh, I also picked up a grill from a 2004. So maybe I'll try to get a 2004 grill in there. I'm not sure what I like better. Uh, I'm not too crazy about this chrome. Um, the grill for the 2004s have a little insert in there. And I feel like I could paint that whatever color I want. But yep, that's down the road. Uh, we got ourselves some factory tow hooks. That is awesome. I think those are standard on the Overland model. What else? Uh, this vehicle did not come with the running boards that Overland has, but I think they were just rotted out. <laughs> As you can see, this, uh, this particular WJ is suffering from a rot issue. Now, fortunately, it's just isolated to the rocker area. I'm thinking I'll just cut this out and I could do a two by four steel tube rocker in there and uh, that'll fix this issue. But this is just terrible. I could stick my hand inside the rocker. Ah, oh, Northeast sucks. Anyway, the body is pretty clean other than at issue. I did find this little dent. This is a interesting little piece right here. I wonder if the door was punched because I could put my hand right in it, so. Interesting. Uh, more on that in a minute. So yeah, the body is straight. Uh, I did source another door at the junkyard. I could go get this door and I think I'm going to get the hatch too because this hatch has some dents right in here. Uh, I'm peeling the paint, but it's going to peel anyway. Also got a dent here. Now, a lot of Jeeps have dents here. I guess people push on the hatch to close them. Uh, there's another dent here. So yeah, maybe I'll do a hatch swap and a door swap. Got to make sure I get my HO badge back on here when I do the swapping. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to do that. I also picked up a trailer hitch. I don't know why this Overland did not have a factory hitch. I think they wimped out on that option. But I also got the insert that 
lets you cut the hole in this and then you fit the, the trailer hitch around the nice trim piece of plastic. So that should be coming soon, eventually. And yeah, again, otherwise a pretty straight body. Oh, I did have an exhaust issue, it completely rotted out. Um, I hung it up with a coat hanger for now, so I'll have to address that later. Giant hole in the muffler and a coat hanger, classy. And here we go guys, the moment you've been waiting for, the interior. <laughs> yeah, well I'm excited anyway, because I sourced myself a complete black interior. I got 2,000 seats, they are from a limited, and these are the softest, most comfortable seats you could sit on. These pads are amazing. So I got these back seats from somewhere in New Jersey. I got this front seat from the junkyard that I frequent. I also grabbed the other front seat from that junkyard, but it was extremely tattered. Now I have a fix for the seats. I'm excited to show you guys. I'm gonna be swapping the pad from a passenger seat onto the driver's seat of that vehicle and uh, it's gonna make it look brand new. But for now, we got a Laredo seat in here and this is comfortable as well. <laughs> I scored so many seats on the hunt for the perfect seat sets. It's not even funny. My basement is full of Jeep seats right now, but uh, we'll have to narrow that down. I will once I get this seat going, but um, I'm really loving the black interior. I could not stand that light gray interior. I just, all my Jeeps, they have to have black leather inside. That's just my thing, I don't know. But I got really nice wood grain limited door cards all around, front, back, left, right. But unfortunately, the driver's door card was missing the, uh, the armrest. Had a big chunk taken out. So I scored this Laredo door card. It matches the Laredo seat. But I plan on fixing the limited door card in an upcoming video. I just gotta get time to do that as well. So there we go. That is the seats and the door cards. Now coming on inside, here we go. Uh, I swapped out the center console because um, the center console I had had a big crack right in here, as so many of them are. But uh, we found this console, it is very nice and uh, I like it. Um, the only thing I didn't fix down here was this, uh, I don't know what you call it, this armadillo armor. Armadillo helmets can block even the best brainwave scanners. <laughs> These little sliders for the shifter cover, this tab had broken off, so I gotta take this apart to replace that one day. No biggie right now, but so far so good. Everything else on this console is nice. So moving on to the center console section, I replaced this piece, this whole piece, the uh, switches and this little interior ashtray, I guess it's the ashtray. Got this from a limited, so that's nice. Uh, I also replaced the AC climate controls because uh, so many of the other buttons were pushed in. When I finally put this one in, a couple bulbs were burnt out. I went ahead and I swapped a couple bulbs inside. It wasn't too hard to do, just a little soldering. I also had to get a new wood grain radio bezel because the one I had was just ugly and faded. And I also got new trim for the airbag over here on the passenger side. This was a pain in the butt to install, but it is possible. I can show you how to do that in another video, but uh, I swapped this piece out. And I uh, also swapped out this piece. This piece was really simple. <laughs> Just a couple clips. Not so much for this piece. And of course I put in a factory nav radio. Now this, uh, this probably won't last too long because I'm having an issue finding a Bluetooth um, auxiliary unit to fit into the, the nav plug. It's kind of a pain in the butt and uh, I don't know, I like to have Bluetooth, so I just like restoring things back to factory condition before I modify it. I don't know, it's something I do, but yeah, here we go. Complete factory dash, and it is looking good. So, um, over here, let's check this out. I have an issue with the headlights. Now, it seems to only be in automatic mode, so I can switch it on and the lights don't come on. I switch it off at night and the lights don't go off, so it's like stuck in uh, auto mode perpetually and uh, I also noticed that there is no um, lever for the tilt steering I think it broke off um, let's see the uh, 
mirror was also ripped off. And uh, <laughs> it's probably part of the anger issue why there's a big dent in the door. I don't know, maybe this stuff was ripped off. Maybe this was punched and that's why everything was broken here. But uh, not to worry, this is fixed and this is looking good. So all I need to do is the limited door card fix, get a limited seat up and running, and then uh, we'll have a complete interior. Let's take a look at the back. Back is good. Leather is just top notch right here. Everything is looking really great. Really enjoy that. Uh, here we go. Uh, it wouldn't be a Jeep if it didn't come with its own bottle of coolant and some track bars. Uh, headliner, not so bad. Nothing sagging, so that is good. And we'll come around to the lift gate. We'll check the glass first because uh, I did get new glass struts. Ta-da! That was nice. But I did not get uh, struts for the lift gate. <laughs> Get out of here. Huh. Well, that's a first. <laughs> Maybe the uh, the weight is off because the glass is up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> so I'll just prop this on my head for now. Take a look back here. And I got a privacy cover. It came with the Jeep. I like them a lot. I got my uh, vice grips keep this thing up continuing on we got uh we got the flip glass and it opens nice and um closes nice so that's another issue um there's another look at the nice mess <laughs> but all the interior panels are here even that storage box is working so this changer nice and uh we got this issue. Seems like uh, we got something stuck on passenger side over here. Driver side opens or releases, but <laughs> she is stuck. There we go. Now it's up. <laughs> so, all right. Again, in here, we had that disgusting spare. If it's nice and shiny, I could sell it on eBay. Oh. <laughs> I ain't selling that. <laughs> this is going straight to the scrapper. It was just as bad as the other ones, so I don't have a spare now because the fifth wheel that I got for these just does not fit in there. But that's it, guys. That is my WJ in a nutshell. I think the only thing I have to do now is start it for y'all. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Ah, so we got a little bit of dark gray smoke. It smells like I am burning a little bit of oil out of the exhaust. So I think it might be leaky valve seals, I think. Let me know, guys, if that's, uh, if that's a thing with WJs. I know they got all sorts of issues when they get old on these 4.7s. So I could probably use some valve seals. And I'm sure I could use some, some of those melling lifters. All right, Doug? So, uh, yeah, other than that, runs real smooth. No knocking, no clunking. Um, I'm really enjoying the way that it runs. I can't wait to actually drive this thing. Oh yeah, one other thing. My uh, AC pump seized up and all this goo in here blew out and spattered everything under here. You can see chunks of it. It's gross, so I'm guessing I need a AC compressor. You can hear it's kind of rattly under there. But yeah, this bad boy starts, it runs smooth, and I really can't wait to drive it soon as I get my plates. So, let's see in here. Yeah, there we go. Seatbelt light, obviously. And we got that airbag recall. So I'll go ahead and I'll get myself uh, a new airbag sensor from the dealership. 
and check it out guys we've got consistent 200 temperature we got consistent oil pressure got a good battery and a half a tank of gas all right uh that's about it guys can't wait to drive this thing legally all right guys that's it for my wj update video go back and check out my wj playlist and you can see everything i've done to this vehicle so far i also got plenty more things to come and hopefully the next video i do for this vehicle is give it a proper test drive can't wait for those plates to come we'll get this thing on the road so uh that's gonna be it guys remember to like and subscribe and i can see you on the next project peace